Butter Stitcher and today is May 25th and this is episode number 50. I am so excited to be here with you guys today and sharing what I have finished, what I've been working on, some plans. I have the giveaway winners and I have a few new giveaways for this episode as well. I first want to just say a big thank you and I no, I, I feel like I say this each time and I truly am thankful for everyone who watches and who has subscribed to my channel and has been with me along this journey. It has been now a year and a few months and it's been so much fun with the friendships I've made throughout this and through the channel uh, and just the cross stitching community in general. So thank you all so much. And I also just wanted to put in a plug for if you are watching and you are new or you've been watching and you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It will let you know when I have new videos. You can also hit the bell, click the bell, and that will notify you when the videos come up. I am on about a two week rotation right now. I will in the next couple weeks have a few extras um, sprinkled in to the videos. So if you wanna be notified, go ahead and hit the bell. I also wanted to take this time as it is my 50th episode and let you know my goal for the rest of this year is to get to 10,000 subscribers. I am a little shy of 9,000 right now, so I do think it is completely doable. So again, if you are watching and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. That doesn't cost you anything. And uh, share my channel with your friends, especially if there are others who like cross-stitch and who want to be inspired. So that's my little plug at the beginning. Uh, I always forget to talk about that because <laughs> I just want to get into the stitching. So I wanted to uh, just do a small little update. My son, my daughter had her last day of school. She had her ballet recital. My son had his end of the year program and tomorrow is a half day and he will be done with school and we will be on full spring or spring, full summer break. <laughs> They are signed up for some different camps throughout the summer and going to the beach and the pool and all sorts of fun stuff. So I am looking forward to summer not having to go to school every day, but I know it will also bring lots of time at home and optimal time for sibling fights. So <laughs> that's what I'll be working with and using my cross stitch as my therapy. So for today, I wanted to show my finishes that I have. One of the finishes is my small for stitch con, and I'm just gonna go ahead and show it um, so that I can have shown it on here. I won't, there will be more things in the gift, but this is my finish. So I actually was able to fully finish it. I stitched and finished this chart which of course I forgot to bring over the actual chart. Um, and it is a Plum Street Samplers and I am drawing a blank on what it is called right now. I will put it right here below what it's called, but I did change the colors. I was inspired by a picture I saw on Shepherd's Needle, their fa uh, Instagram. They had done a conversion. They didn't post what their colors were, but I just looked at the picture and picked classic color works and one weak style works that I thought matched. And so that's what I did. I will put the conversion below if you're interested. And I finished it in a round. There is a piece of a uh, rickrack sewn from lady.creates. And then this is a tart pan. So I am so excited. I kind of want to keep it, but I am going to give it for my exchange and then I'll stitch myself another one. And I also wanted to show the tart pans are from Amazon and I stitched this on 32 count and it calls for 36 count. 
So I was a little bit nervous that it wasn't gonna fit, but I bought the five inch mini baking tart tans, tart tins from Amazon and they just came today. So I can link these below as well to finish if you're interested in finishing your piece in that. But I just, I think it is so cute. So this is my exchange stitch piece. And then I have other patriotic goodies that will be in the bag. To which if I was to end up with my own gift, I would not be upset. Um, okay, so this is my next finish. And this was a start and a finish. I stitched this mini sampler. And it is from, it's the first in the series of Make Your Mark by Chantel at 141 Design Company. And I, she sent me one in advance um, to stitch up and make something with to share. So I put my name in here, or she had charted my name for me, but my name is in here. And I stitched it on 32 count Haunted by Picture This Plus with a... I believe it's called Peachy or something. I'll put the name below. It's a Victorian motto uh, thread. And how I started with it is I knew I wanted to use this Portsmouth fabric. So I took, I looked through my linen and matched the linen to the fabric. And then I found a pink that matched the fabric as well. So I worked from the fabric to pick out what I wanted to use to stitch it with which it's funny because I had already done that. And then Chantel was talking about doing that with something else. So that is something that uh, other people are doing as well. Um, so this is the front of the mat. This is my stitching mat pattern that I have on my blog, sweetwaterstitcher.com, which I'll link below. I did adapt the pockets a little bit. I made four pockets and I just kind of pieced it all together and this is what the back looks like. So it'll sit on my table at StitchCon. It sits and hangs, this is flat and it hangs over a little bit so I can stick scissors and different stuff in there. And then these are just covered buttons that have magnets on them which are made into needle minders. So I will, again, I will link the pattern that I have on my blog and this is one of the videos that's going to be coming out in the next two weeks. I am going to record a tutorial to put on YouTube as to how I make the um, mat. I know people, I wrote the pattern all out and I haven't had time to record one, but I'm going to get that done and that will be up on my channel. So look for that in the next two weeks. Um, if you are interested in making a stitching mat. I have seen a lot of people using them and making them. And if you do use my pattern measurements, um, use the hashtag, hashtag Sweetwater Stitching Mat, and then I and other people can see what you have made. One more thing I made, and I made two more of these for my kids, is this was the little pouch from um, Minky Kim the Trixie pouch, and it is awesome. This is the first one I made, which the ones I made for my kids, of course, are better because I knew what to do now. <laughs> but this is perfect, it all turned out fine. Um, this is what it looks like when you open it up. It's really great to set on your table, and I have different things in here that I use, a needle book, um, I have a corner gauge, I have some scissors, I also, this idea I got, I haven't used it yet, but I got this idea from Annie and Belle and Chelsea from Annie B's Stitch, um, Annie B's Folk Art, is they were talking about having an ORT container at their retreat, and this is a metal tin, and it actually, it had this beeswax in it, and I just took the beeswax out, it was in a plastic bag, and this would be a perfect little container to put your ORTs in, it would magnetize to the magnets on the stitching mat, and then it fits right in here. And I have needles, like I said, I have a pencil in here. So all of this just zips right on up 
in here and then this can sit next to you so this is an a awesome pouch i this one took me about an hour and a half to make it was the first one and then yesterday i made two for my kids which i'll put a picture of them in here and um it took me an hour and a half to make two of them so once i got the hang of what to do it was really easy to make and i was planning to make those for my table gifts um, but I wasn't sure if I would have enough time, so I went ahead and went with a different idea. Um, but I will be making those for table gifts for a future retreat since I know that I can do them and it's not going to take terribly a long time. So that was all of my finishes for this week. And two of them were whips as well as finishes. For my other whips for this week, the first one was What Remains by Blackbird Designs. And this was my Mother's Day start. And I did convert the floss and I will put it in the description below. And I believe it's in the last video as well. But I just love how the colors look on this fabric. This is 36 count Thornfield by Needle and Flax. And so I was able to get the whole bones of the border and then start in on this red. And then I added a few um, of those gold stars. I was just trying to check the colors. Um, the other colors I are close enough, but I wasn't sure what that yellow -y gold color was gonna look like. So that is my What Remains and I, am anxious to get back to this. I really don't think it's gonna take that much time considering I got the whole border in and then this, and I did not work on this for that long. So I don't think this is gonna take that long. I just need to get back to it. So that was my first whip. My next whip was Live On Little. And I just picked this up and got a little more in. And I kind of feel like this is how I am going to attack this project because I just don't have the patience to sit and um, only stitch this. So I'm going to keep this project down next to my stitching chair. And when I feel like picking it up, I'm gonna pick it up and put some more stitches in it and then eventually it will be finished but it's just so big that I just don't feel like I feel like if I try to focus only on it I'm going to get overwhelmed so I was able to go in and fill in the um some of the vines on this side and then I started I just have two of these little leaves and that was one night or one afternoon of stitching um so like I said, slowly but surely this will get done. And this is with one strand of the call for, and this is uh, Winter Brew by r and &R. So again, I love this so much. And after I finished my This Is The Day, it really got me inspired to work on some of her other patterns, which you'll see I'm like on a Plum Street roll to get some more of them finished so that I can put them all on one wall together. The next one I was a new start and this is a sal, which I will have to look up what the hashtag is and I'll put it here, but it is a sal hosted by um, Stitchy Linda and it's the Seaside Tiny Town and she at, she's stitching this one, this is the new one but you can stitch any tiny towns, they said. And I bought the full kit, or it was the pattern and all the floss from Treehouse Fiber Arts. I'm not sure if Rachel has any more, but I thought, well, it calls for a lot of floss and I didn't wanna have to go hunting for it. And I knew I wanted to use the call for. And this is on 32 count flax, I believe. And this is where I am, and this is all the floss. I wanna cover it up. They're so pretty. And this is in 
um, my new bag that I got, or my keeper that I got from Tiger Lily at, or Carrie Tiger at Tiger Lily Designs. And I'm loving having, I had three projects and now I have two projects in here and I can carry it around. And then if I want to pick up one of them, I can pick that one up. Or if I want to get the other one out, I can get the other one out, but it's all in the same place. Next whip is, if I can get the floss off the pattern, um, Always Remember by Plum Street Samplers. And I am using a very similar, some of the colors are the same, conversion as Chelsea, who is stitching Wren on Instagram. She converted her house to be a yellow house, and I used her colors for that. And then the blues, for the flowers, I'm. it's the same idea as hers, but they're not the exact same colors. And this is where I am. So I was able to get in the outline of the grass, get all the rest of the stars in the house done, build the roof, and then I started filling in some more of these um, stems. I, again, I love this piece so much. It has a lot of symbolism to me. She was using it as a remembrance piece for her dad. I am using it as a remembrance piece for my family. Um, we just had our house painted gray, but our house that we live in right now, which unless we build a house down the road, this will be our forever home, or at least the home to raise our kids in, um, was yellow, so that. And then it has three eagles, and I have three kids. So I thought that this would be a really fun um, piece to have, do a little write up on a um, library card on the back of telling what the symbolism is of the piece. And then this could hang with my other Paulette houses. So, and this is a piece of color and cotton. It's either, I think it's 28 count, but it was a misdyed, so it doesn't have a name, but it's a really pretty, grayish blue so it was the perfect piece for this project so I, do, I don't even know what this wasn't really on my radar and I just got inspired to work on it and worked on it for a couple days so I have put it away since but I'm sure it will make a reappearance and then my last whip is a, this was the pattern from the Farm Girl Gatherings Retreat at Amana, the Plum Street Samplers. And I, and it's American Welcome, and I am in the Farm Girl Dry Goods Patreon. So what Michelle was able to do with, in collaboration with Paulette, is she was able to offer kits of the pattern to those who were in Patreon. We did have to pay for the full kit, um, but you had to be a Patreon member and there was a cutoff of when you had to have been a member and all this, there was different things, but we were able to get the kit. So I was thrilled. Um, it is one of my goals in 2024 to get to one of the Farm Girl Dry Good retreats. Um, but I, I just wasn't able to get to this one. And I love Plum Street and Paulette, as I know many of you do. So this was the piece, which I know lots of people have seen. I have gotten started, a small start. This is on a piece of fabric called, I think it's called um, Old, Old Amana. And it was dyed by Michelle Rudy of Farm Girl Dry Goods. So I started in the middle at the top and then in working over this flower I did last night. It is super fun. And I have it on this ring. Ah, my threads. There, It's a mix of DMC and color and cotton. And it is amazing. If you go over and, oh, um, I cannot think of what her first name is, but her Instagram is Flame Fingers. She has the whole piece finished already. 
So I'm like, I got to get working on it. But she was at the retreat and she got it before I did. So, um, but I do not think this is going to take the, the water might take a little bit, but there's sailboats and words and I don't, and I don't think it's going to be that long. Um, it's either the same, I think it's smaller than, um, this is the day. And that took me about two weeks. So I don't anticipate this taking forever and I want to get this done. So this is also in my carry, um, tiger lily case, which this will go with me to stitch con to work on because I am determined. This is like the one patriotic larger piece that I really want to get finished this year. The other couple I have, I will like live on little and the Teresa Kogut, um, land that I love. I will work on putting stitches in, but I have no intention of that being completed, uh, by this year, but I do want to keep working on it. And it is a goal of mine to complete it. All right. Next is my plans. So the first plan, and I do not have the kit right now, is that I am going to be participating in the Positivity Lifts Stitch Along with um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And it starts in the end of June. And I will have a kit to show you probably next video. I will have a discount code if you want to participate. But it's a hot air balloon, lots of bright colors um, and positive words. So I am excited to participate and also to use it in one of my girls' rooms. I think that they would really like that. So I'm excited about that and that's coming up in the end of June. And then I'm going to be stitching along with Back Corner Shop with the red, white, and June stitch along. And one of the um, parts that I'm going to be stitching, which I've showed this before, is the cross stitch charts from the Summer Memories book. And I have fully finalized, I'm going to use the R of Phil, R Floss colors. And I got the box here. And I need to make, I'm gonna make another one of those little bags to put them in, uh, the Trixie pouch to put these in. I, made a bag with more of the, the Portsmouth fabric. So in the inside, it is just a neutral. And then this is the back and this is the front. So I need a bigger bag because there was a lot of stuff I was putting in here. And these are the fabrics I'm going to use. Just white Zweigart. I bought 32 count Polar Plunge, which this is for the Kathy Haberman pieces, but this blue matches Kimberly's, um, what is this called? Kimberly's Blue Gingham perfectly. So I have that. I have some um, flax to go with it. And I also have this white mini dot. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not, but I put it together. So these are all the fabrics I'm gonna use mixing, mix matching which one and using the RFL um, for this. So this is all in my bag and this is one of the projects I'm going to take to stitch con as well. And uh, Chantel had a great idea. Sorry, that is really crinkly. Sorry. She was saying to, because I have the book and I do, I'm thinking about getting it bound. I have other books bound. Um, but she was saying to take this and just photocopy the chart so that when you're stitching, you just have the chart in front of you. So I am thinking about, I need to pick the ones I wanna work on and photocopy them so that I just have to have one piece of paper and I don't have to fiddle with the book um, because I will have my stand, but then the book will be flying everywhere, I'm sure. Okay, and then, the next project I'm going to work on for Red, White, and June is 
the Star Spangled Ornaments from Fat Quarter Shop. And I have the thread pack, which I went ahead and bought the thread pack because I love how they look. I love the variegation in all of them. I think my favorite one is the watermelon. <laughs> I just love the blue, it's so pretty. So I have the thread pack and then I have, as of right now, I'm going to use the 25 count pebble unless I come up with a different count or a different fabric. I wanna use the 25 count because I did also get the, I did also get the tart tins from Fat Quarter Shop. So I want to finish them in here. Um, so I want to use the 25 count. Otherwise, I, it won't fit. So I need to, I think I'm just going to go with the pebble because I had it and I can stitch them and I don't think these are going to take very long. So I'm really excited because after I finished my small for stitch con and I finished my mat, it really gave me some motivation to like get working on stuff that I think that the finishing or finishes kind of give you some endorphins to like, oh, I'm so excited. Like it gave me an extra push because I was working on just larger projects, which I love the larger projects. But when you're just stitching and stitching and nothing's getting completed, I kind of, it kind of, gets me down. So to have some smalls, whether they're really little or they're medium size that you can fit complete, that really like got gave me a lot of motivation. So if you don't do that, I would highly suggest that. Okay, that is haul. So that is my red, white, and June plan. Um, and like I said, I'll be taking the summer memories, a couple of those, um, I'll take the sta the little stamps to the ornaments to stitch on at StitchCon. I'm going to take my um, American Welcome to stitch on. And then I think I'm going to take one more project, which is what I'm still trying to decide on. I was watching Holly at Mrs. Jones Stitches, and she was talking about how she was kind of getting in the mood to stitch something fall um, or like kind of not patriotic. And I ha I wanna get American Welcome done and I wanna do these smalls, but I also am feeling kind of like I'm ready to move on to the next, just to something else. So I have a couple ideas. Um, I kitted up Jack's Bash or I already had that kitted up by Plum Street. So that's one. I also am thinking about starting Grace Doth Abounds, which is a fall piece that was released last year from Plum Street. Or I have, um, it's a blackbird that I cannot think of what it's called right now. It's a blackbird house. Um, I cannot think, but that's another contender. Just, it's like, kind of fallish, kind of more earthy tones. Um, so I I don't know why, because it's hot here and we're just getting into summer, but that sounds like something I wanna do is have one of those in as an extra stitch. So those will probably be the four things I take to Stitch Con, as far as Stitch Con goes. And let's see. The next thing I want to mention is I just wanted to mention um, a cross or a, a floss tube that I watched that I have not watched before, um, and it is the Curious Crafters, and it's two sisters, and they were really enjoyable to watch. They are doing the salt box solstice stitch along that I, um, along with two others, are hosting, and I need to get moving on that too. So that could be something I pick up. Um, but they had lots of fun stuff and um, they had a toast. So they were toasting to their mom and they had like a 
some candy they were toasting with, but it was a really, I've heard other people talk about their channel, but I had never watched. So if you um, are looking for someone new, go check them out. And then when I go to StitchCon, I'm sure there are people who are excited to meet me and I am equally as excited to meet you and I'm excited to meet other floss tubers that I talk to on Instagram or on their videos and I've never met them in person. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting there and I know it's gonna be a lot of people and I'm sure it's gonna be overwhelming, but it will be fun and I'm really excited to get, I'm super excited to go to keepsakes and see what everyone talks about. So, um, I'm just, I'm on a high to get to StitchCon <laughs> and I'm working on not being sick between now and then, because if I get sick, I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> um, so I have things everywhere. I'm trying to figure out what's next. All right, I think next is haul, and then I have the giveaways. So my first, have stuff from last week and this week, so I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, this is the first thing. This was a kit that I am in a club with Dying to Stitch, and it is called the S Sampler Sewing Circle, and I don't know if there's still openings, but if there is, you can contact Dying to Stitch and they have a form you fill out. This was the first kit. It is from Blackbird. It's called A Little Bit of Spring. It is gorgeous. And it was inspired by, this is the um, antique that they based it off of. It's so, so pretty. Um, So I am very excited to work on that. I have that in a bag of a potential start in the future, but I'm not ready to, to pull that out quite yet. This was a bag that I got from Winding Rainbows and I just thought this fabric was really pretty. So I think I might put my Positivity um, Lifts Sal in this bag. It talks about happy, and sunshine and good things happening, renew. Um, so I just thought this was a really pretty bag. Then I also got, so I have the Seaside Tiny Town and then I got also the frill. I am either going to add this on or I'm going to um, do this separately. I got the tins. And then I was able to snag all of the floss. It's not in a pack yet, but I made my own pack for the, um, the Beach Town by Country Cottage that's coming out. And I am going to get on that. It's so adorable, but I was able to grab the floss for that. So I had, so I, like I said, I had to create my own floss pack, but they had all of the floss in stock. Then I was able to pick up a bag from Michelle Lee Quilts. This is a line by Sweetwater Fabric called State Side, State something or other, I forget. It has all the states. So pretty. Then, oh, this is what the tart looks like from Amazon. And then I I bought stuff from Kingsland Needle Art before, but they had some really good fabric. So this is her um, Etsy shop. They had 36 count espresso from R and R, which I'm thinking about doing Grace Dotha Bounds on this if I do that. Chantilly by Color and Cotton, and also Cottage Stone by Color and Cotton. So I was wanting to be at the Color and Cotton grand opening, and obviously that wasn't going to happen. So I'm like, well, let me see if I can find some Color and Cotton fabric. <laughs> so I found that. And then, let's 
see what else I have in here. This is like two weeks of stuff. So some of the stuff showed up at like right after the last video. So I kind of forget what I had. Um, all right, let's see. The next thing I got, and of course I got this right after my last video, I got the two charts from Annabella's that were from their retreat by Teresa Kogut, Honey Bee Needle Book. Well, there were four. I got two of them. So I got this one and I got Honey. So, and both of them, I have the DMC to start when I am ready, but I'm not ready yet. I did also, this was part of um, the Fox and Rabbit Patreon. You, I'm at the level where you get um, two pieces of fabric every quarter. And this was one of them. And I thought this might look good for this. So I'm considering doing it on Eureka. So I have that. And then I got, this is the from the Life is Just a Bowl series, the June one, and it's so cute with the little boy doing, getting seashells, um, so cute. And I mentioned before, you can get the chart as a PDF from Fat Quarter Shop. And Chantel at 141 Design is going to be carrying a bowl that's very similar to that in her shop. And I'm sure she'll be sharing that soon. So be on the lookout if you are looking for a little bowl. Um, if you were not able to get in the club originally. Let's see. I also got some hands-on design. Um, this was a new release. Happy birthday. And I got Mary a classic Christmas, which I am going to be doing this for Jolly July for sure. And then, what was this pack? Oh, that was just some pack. This is from Maple, Sugar Maple Designs, which is, um, from Whitley at Southern Stitchers Co. She designed this chart, Freedom House. And then she has another chart coming out, which I saw that you can buy the PDF of it on Fat Quarter Shop already. And it's so pretty. And I have that on order too. So cute little idea if you're looking for some more patriotic. Um, this is from... Um, Plum Street. This is a new release. It was from a retreat, I believe, but this is now, or it was exclusive to Country Sampler. I bought it from Country Sampler. I think it's going to be widely released, but I know they have it at Country Sampler if you're looking. And like I said, I was on a Plum Street kick for sure. What were these other things? Oh, I did get um, some th more just plain thread melt caps. You can buy sets of 50 of them to put with your floss. So I got some more of those. And then from Lady Dot, I bought Red Wagon, which this is the lace that Teresa uses on her finishes for her two retreat pieces. And then I thought this was cute. This is called a Tiny Tucket Pocket. And it's a kit to make this. And it's kind of like a needle book. So it comes with everything in it and instructions. Clearly, I haven't tried to make it yet. And that was just some more fabric. Uh, okay, and then I have one more thing. And this will lead us to the giveaways. This was a sweet gift of happy mail from Amanda at Soulful Creations. And I wanna get her card. This is, let's see. This is her card. Here's the um, QR code if you wanna take a picture. Or this is her Thing. And I'll put a link below to this too. But she sent me some fun new things. She sent me three different of these 
acrylic floss keeps. One of them says, um, be kind and has honey. So cute. This one is farm fresh lemons. And I hope you can see through. And then this one is sweet strawberries. And then she sent like kind of that go with it. This is, these are needle minders, a little honey jar. She sent lemon crate, so cute. These are little barns that are like the Priscilla and Chelsea barns. And a strawberry jam. So thank you so much, Amanda. And some of these are gonna be for giveaways. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you. And that was, uh, I'm like, I don't know who this, what did I order? <laughs> and it was some happy mail. So thank you. And um, like I said, I will be sharing some of those with you guys. Uh, but go check her out. And she is who also has the, I think they're four inch circles cut out of the sticky board. And that is what I used on this finish is I used a couple of them. Like I used one in the back and then I put um, the cotton stuffing so it's nice and firm. And then I have another one stuck to the back of the tart tin. So they're come in handy for a lot of different things. All right, so for the winners from last week's giveaway, um, I wanted to say thank you for all of the comments I have been trying my hardest to keep caught up with the comments um, and I try to respond if you have a question. There are a few I haven't like hit the heart because I wanted to go back and respond to and I'll go back and respond to them. Um, but thank you guys for all the comments and thank you for taking the time to do that. I do read them all um, and I'm very appreciative of them. So if you are a winner, you need to send me an email to sweetwaterstitcher at gmail.com with your name, address, and what you won, and I will get it in the mail to you. So the first one, which was the Kohana scissors, the winner is Gail Haas, H-A-A-S, Gail Haas is the winner of this. So congratulations, Gail, and happy belated Mother's Day. Um, number two was happy birthday, America, and the winner is Amy Visco. Amy Visco, you are the winner. Number three was a heart, my heart's welcome, and the winner is Maureen Abram. Abramson, Maureen Abramson. Number four was Christmas Mini Moon, and the winner is Autumn Jewel. Number five was Stitching Bee, and the winner is Lori Zarnecki. Lori Zarnecki. And the last one, number six, the uh, honeybee sampling. The winner is Diana Berry. So congratulations to all of the winners. Again, like I said, email me your name and address, and I will get that in the mail to you. So for this week's giveaway, I have a few different things. Um, and how to enter into the giveaway. You need to be over 18. You need to be a subscriber to the channel. You need to like the video. Um, for this week, since it is my 50th, um, I will ship anywhere. So you can be live anywhere in the US, or you can live anywhere in the world. Um, normally I stick to US because of the postage, but uh, for this video, I want to open it to everybody um, because I knew I do have some subscribers who live overseas. So if you do, this is open to everyone. Um, so I wanted to 
show. The first one, this is number one, and to, oh, to enter, you need to leave a comment below as well. So, and then you're going to use the numbers that correspond to what I'm showing. Um, so, let's see. Since people are still working on Patriotic, um, why don't you leave what is your favorite Patriotic um, cross stitch that you have done? And if you haven't done any, then what is your favorite that you would like to do? Um, so you just write that and then write whatever numbers you're interested in. And then if you wanna put other stuff too, that's fine. Um, but that's what you have to do to be entered. So number one is God Bless America by Stitching with the Housewives. And this is their one of their new releases. And this was donated by Fat Quarter Shop. So thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. Um, God Bless America, this is number one. Number two, this is also from Fat Quarter Shop. This is Feast of Friendship, number two. Number three is a classic Christmas. This is number three, and this was because I bought two on accident. So number three. And number four is going to be, let's see. I think I'm gonna do like a couple of these. So I have, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of these between the floss catchers and the needle minders. So we'll do six opportunities and I'll just pick one that you'll get. And these are the things from Soulful Creations. So there's six opportunities for that. And that is number one, two, three. That is number four. All right, that is all for the giveaways for this week. So that, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure you like the video. Um, hit the bell because like I said, I'll have some different video, some different um, videos coming out randomly in the next couple weeks. One of them will be the stitching mat tutorial. Uh, and then I have a couple other things potentially, I don't know what is going to get made and what's gonna come out, but the stitching mat for sure, and then a floss tube. Um, but I hope you guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. If you're doing anything outdoors, I hope that you wear lots of sunscreen. And if it's warm where you are, I'm assuming, um, it might still be cold. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend, great week, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.